For British Science Week, we're focusing on our local luminaries. Meet Neville Maskelyne. Neville Maskelyne was born in Kensington Gore in 1732, the son of Edmund Maskelyne, a practising barrister at law and counsel to the Secretary of State's office, who lived at Purton. Edmund Maskelyne married Elizabeth Booth, daughter of John Booth and Elizabeth Proger, on the 4th of February 1724. They had four children, William, Edmund, Neville and Margaret. Neville wrote autobiographical notes in 1800, following the death of his two elder brothers. He said he was the last male heir of an ancient family, long settled at Person in the county of Wiltshire, which from the name probably came from Normandy, where there is or was 50 years ago a family of that name, Masculine. After attending Westminster School, he studied mathematics at Trinity College, Cambridge. He was also a clergyman, becoming an ordained deacon in 1755, a priest in 1756, a Bachelor of Divinity in 1758 and a Doctor of Divinity in 1777. In 1755, he became curate of Chipping Barnet and in 1775 received the living of Shrewardine, Shropshire, which he gave up to become rector of North Runcton Church from 1782 until his death. The solar eclipse of 1748 piqued Maskelyne's interest in astronomy and he began working with James Bradley, the Astronomer Royal, in the 1750s. With Bradley's support, he became a Fellow of the Royal Society in 1758, aged just 26. His association with Bradley also led to his involvement in the biggest astronomical question of that time, the calculation of accurate longitude. In 1761, the young astronomer tested Tobias Mayer's lunar tables on a voyage to St Helena in the South Atlantic, becoming a lifelong champion of the lunar distance method. He observed the transit of Venus across the face of the Sun for the Royal Society and used his time at sea to experiment with Mayer's lunar tables and Bradley's sextant. Maskelyne was assisted by Charles Mason and Jeremiah Dixon, who later surveyed the Mason-Dixon line, and they successfully observed the transit of Venus from the Cape of Good Hope. Maskelyne recorded their 40-day trip in a 1762 Philosophical Transactions paper. A year later, Maskelyne published The British Mariner's Guide, a handbook containing new versions of Mayer's tables and instructions for observing and calculating longitude. In September 1763, Maskelyne set sail on the Princess Louisa to test both astronomical methods. Christopher Irwin accompanied him with two of his marine chairs. Six months later, John Harrison's son, William, left for Barbados on board the Tartar with the H4 Sea Watch, which Maskelyne trialled. After landing at Barbados, Maskelyne made further observations to help assess both methods. With the help of a proper nautical almanac, all the difficult parts of the calculations by the lunar method might be taken away and the remaining part to be done at sea might be practised on board of every ship if the persons belonging to it would give proper attention to it. But the calculations would always be somewhat conciser in the method by the watch than in that by the moon. In 1765, Maskelyne was appointed Astronomer Royal. Accurate and regularly updated astronomical tables were needed for both timekeeper and lunar distance calculations of longitude. The Act of 1765 instructed the Board of Longitude to produce an annual nautical almanac of astronomical tables for use at sea. Maskelyne oversaw the collection and processing of data for these tables from the Royal Observatory at Greenwich. It took laborious mathematical work to turn the observational data into usable tables, done by a network of human computers and comparers across the country, also known as poorly paid mathematical assistants. Maskelyne was also 
also the lead scientist of the 1774 Schehalian experiment, which attempted to calculate the density of the Earth. Isaac Newton had postulated that if a pendulum hung straight down and a much larger mass like a mountain was nearby, then the mountain's gravity would pull the pendulum out of line. If one knew the volume and the mass of the pendulum and could measure how far out of line it was, one could calculate the mass of the large object, in this case, the mountain. The Shehalian experiment tried to do just that. Uh, Maskelyne and his team estimated the Earth's density to be 4.5 by 1,024 kilograms. The Earth's mass as calculated today is 5.89 by 1,024 kilograms, meaning that Maskelyne and his team were amazingly about 80% accurate. Maskelyne was deeply involved in the work of the Board of Longitude, especially in making judgments on technical matters and the testing of methods and hardware. And this sometimes led to disputes. The difficulties that occurred between the Harrisons and the Board of Longitude and the accusations made against Maskelyne personally, particularly in this remarks on a pamphlet, are hinted at by the collection of extracts from the minutes of the board, which focus closely on interactions with Harrison. Maskelyne's role as an expert who carried out observations against which other longitude methods were tested, and as a member of the board that adjudicated them, left him open to criticism by those hoping to receive rewards. The papers, held at observatory archives at Royal Museum's Greenwich, are testament to Maskelyne's close involvement with and painstaking work on both astronomical and timekeeping methods. In 1784, Maskelyne married Sophia Rose at the parish church of St Andrew Holborn. His only child, Margaret, was born at Greenwich on the 25th of June, 1785. When his brother William died in 1772, Maskelyne inherited Pond's farm at Purton Stoke, which he used as a country retreat. In later years, he inherited other properties and various charitable responsibilities in the neighbourhood. The Reverend Dr. Neville Maskelyne, DD, FRS, FRSE, became the fifth British Astronomer Royal, holding office until his death at the Greenwich Observatory on the 9th of February, 1811. Maskelyne was taken to St. Nicholas's Church, Purton, where he was buried in the churchyard on the 20th of February. His wife, Sophia Rose, and daughter Margaret are buried with him. And there is a tablet inside the church which reads In the cemetery of this church are deposited the remains of Neville Maskelyne, DD, FRS, Astronomer Royal. And whether you look at the simplicity of his life or the kindness of his heart or the usefulness of his learning, this man is worthy of being publicly mourned since he worshipped the great creator by formulating laws of nature. Virtuous without presence, he demonstrated goodness in his work, ultimately trusting not in himself, but in Christ to the bosom of the Eternal Father. He rendered a life well lived in the certain hope of the rewards to come. <laughs>